Okay, guys, we uh, I think we had about 48,000 out there today, maybe a few more. Um, and very thankful for that. You know, it's, what a day for football, man. I mean, about as good as it gets. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I think um, for the most part, it's pretty clean. You know, I think there's a, there's a lot of balance in the game um, and a ton of situational work, in particular right there at the end. So, um, you know what, I'm proud of our team. You know, I told them that on the field. You, you think about we're at the halfway point um, through the offseason. I think we've made a ton of progress. This group in particular, I think the leadership, the accountability, the self-discipline, uh, and we've got a team. You know, we've got a group that gets along with each other and has worked hard. Um, and we got out here injury-free today for the most part. And uh, we'll be able to take a break and kind of restart here in the middle of May. So... Uh, it's been a good day's work. Um, I found out today Zach's going to be it's his last day. So um, headed to Jacksonville. We're certainly appreciative of all of your time here and uh, wish you nothing but the best going forward. What questions we got here? You get to ask us something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, would you, how would you assess the quarterback's play? DJ man, some really Yeah. Throws, yeah, I think when we – I thought the rush and the coverage um, at times today, uh, the rush and the coverage worked well together. I mean, you could see that. I thought that they did a nice job affecting the quarterback. The coverage was tight. Uh, overall, we've made progress in the secondary. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, we threw it to the other team a couple of times. We'd like to have those back. But overall, when given opportunity, I thought we took advantage of it. Um, you know, I do think that um, those guys have been awesome. I mean, I can't compliment those two guys enough. Um, just to see them, you know, you got a guy, it's like polar opposites, right? You got this guy who started 43 games, he's incredibly aware, smart, um, different type of player than DJ. And then DJ's obviously, you can see he's athletic, he can play, make plays with his feet, and he has no experience, right? So. To see those guys um, collaborate, to go back and forth throughout the spring. Uh, and today, you can see DJ's made some progress. Got, you know, just got here in January. So, overall, a lot of good today. Um, I do think there'll be things that we can do better. There's no question about it. I thought at times um, the rush was effective, and I think the coverage had something to do with that. I thought we covered them pretty good today. What, what about the game-winning drive there, Graham? I mean, you guys obviously set that up with the punt, and it worked yeah. out perfection for you. Yeah. And and how much of that was was there some? Is there a little? Was there any playing with the clock and the numbers and the? Yeah. So unique about the the format of the game. Once it gets to four minutes, both teams have to play two-minute mode like they're behind, right? So. Um, we had timeouts in our pockets, both teams, you know, and I think we had some incomplete passes. We had some completions that got out of bounds, and that led to a couple turnovers and possession there. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's fourth down, and you got three timeouts in your pocket to punt it away and then get it back, um, and then to get some chunks. You know, I mean, I think that was – I'm telling you right now, the situation that, that happened in that last possession, uh, we have worked – all, all of those situations in the last couple of weeks. You know, I mean, it was like clinic tape. So even the, uh, the clock, and then they gave us seven seconds, and then they're the one more play scenario, and then to be able to line up and kick it. So um, got a chunk play, two chunk plays in reality, and then to be able to, to execute the play with seven seconds and get the timeout, I thought was good situational ball. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, it's a very specific situation. And I think Arliss, we're going to be able to coach Arliss off the tape, right? He, he took a couple rotations after he caught that. He literally needs to catch the ball and slide, and then it's timeout. So, um, yeah, it was really good ball. I mean, that's, a, that, that's as good of a situation as we could have asked for. Mike Yankee. Coach, uh, you talked about Graham's leadership all, all spring. Um, How's he handled? I mean, obviously, um, you know, he comes back. He's had a, a really good year last year. How's he handled all of the, the hype surrounding DJ? And you, you, you just talked about how those guys work so well together. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing about Graham, and you guys know him that are here um, all the time, is he is confident, he's humble, um, and he's a great teammate. You know, I think he's got enough awareness. I mean, we're talking about 43 starts. Uh, he's been through the highs and lows of, throughout his career. So um, I think he sees a young player that's talented, and he is doing everything that he can do uh, to help him, you know, take on more. You know, and I think not only um, teaching him the football part, but I just think the example every day of how to uh, prepare, how to approach meetings, the self-discipline part relative to how to take care of your body, how to study film. I think we're going to look back and we're going to say that it's one of the best things that happened to the University of Florida is Graham Mertz came back for another year while DJ Lagway, Lagway was a true freshman. You know, so it's going to benefit both guys. I think there's something to teaching, right? I think that's the best way to learn. And I think both guys are just good human beings, right? And I think they've got character. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been fun to watch, fun to be a part of. Billy, how much more confident are you after this spring than you have been the previous two springs looking forward to see what you've got and how far you've come? Yeah, I think I look around the, the room in a team meeting setting. I see some guys that are in year two, year three of our systems that have played a lot of football. Um, the top of that list is the quarterback position. Um, but overall, with the stat we've been using with the 41,600 snaps of experience, um, I think the, the guys that are coming back on this team understand the expectations. They know what we expect of them as people, as students, as players. Um, I think as a coach, man, the players are what give you confidence. And I mean, I think when you look around the room and you can trust the people that are in the room, and I think we're in a different place. You know, as a result of all the work we've done with the roster, um, we're deeper. Uh, we've got more height and length. Um, we've just got more veteran players, and I think the young talent, the freshmen and the portal players are going to make help us. So I'm definitely – that to go along with the, the changes that we made after evaluating the season. I feel good about where we're at. Matt Baker. Hey, Billy. Um, what did you kind of think from, from DJ Lagway in terms of the poise perspective? Obviously, playing out there in front of all those fans is, is different than what he's done in practice. Yeah, I think – I'm going to tell you, I think yes or Thursday is when I saw it. Uh, we actually finished Thursday practice with an overtime period, orange versus blue, right? We taught the situation. Uh, we reviewed it in a team meeting, and then we went out and executed, and we declared it's going to be worth three points. Whoever wins the overtime will start with a 3-0 lead. Um, and I kind of saw him, it, okay, it's time to compete, you know, and I think ultimately uh, even showed that a little bit out there today. You know, he kind of flipped the switch. You can see that competitive spirit a little bit. So um, that's the good thing because you don't know. You know, I mean, you can practice all spring, but when it's, when it's time, I think he showed he's a competitor uh, and he had the ability. It wasn't too big for him, you know, so I think that was healthy. Billy, how do you feel about the amount of field goals that got attempted today? Obviously, yeah. that means yeah. the defense is getting stops. You know, Pup Howard had that great pass yeah. breakup, but I'm sure you want the offense to finish some of those. Yeah, no, I'd be part of the part of the evaluation of the game. You know, I mean, I think we all understand red zone touchdowns are important. Couple borderline go for it situations where we maybe can manage the game a little bit better, first, second, and third down. Um, and then you know. Um, you divide the specialists up, you know, and each team's got strengths and weaknesses, you know, I think. Um, so part of the game is red zone touchdowns. And I think it's going to be that way, that way each year, uh, next year in the season. So each game next year in the season. So it's important every week, and I think that'll be part of the lesson from the game. It's one of the reasons we play a spring game. And then LJ got some run with the starters today. How do you feel like he did with that opportunity? Yeah, now we divided the teams up to try to create some balance between the groups. Um, and, you know, you're rotating players once the teams are declared, and there's no question. LJ has gotten better each practice. Um, and, you know, I, th I feel the same way about him. I think he, he showed out there today that it's not too big for him either. You know, and he was able to kind of get into that competitive mode and, 
it's one thing to practice. You know, it's another thing when that ball is put in and there's a crowd in there to be able to narrow your focus and turn into a competitor and not, not be distracted. So I think he's in that same mold as DJ. There's some maturity there. You know, being a coach's son helps. Um, but he's definitely a talented young player that's got a promising future. Jacob? Some uh, nice routes and catches for Marcus Burke today. What, mm -hmm. what did you think about his spring? And, and I guess what's the next step for him? How, do, how does he yeah. elevate his game? What does he need to do? You know, Marcus is one of the players that I'm most proud of on our team. Um, Marcus has made a ton of progress since we arrived a couple years ago. Um, just overall, you know, I think um, – He's, he has matured. Um, I think he's grown a lot. And I think overall his approach to life uh, has helped his approach to football. You know, and I think he's had the best offseason uh, since he's been here. He changed his body. He's added quite a bit of lean muscle. His durability has been better. He's been available. He's battled the injury bug a little bit. Um, and I'll tell you, he finished the spring strong. You know, he stacked up. Practice 13 was probably his best, and then he had a good day Thursday, and then today. So we need Marcus Burke to, to grow up and mature, and I think this offseason uh, he's proven that he's capable. I'm excited about uh, 88, as I call him. You know, he, um, I'm proud of the way he has grown as a person. And I think ultimately we're seeing that the football is better because of that. No, what, what have you seen out of that star position? We've seen a couple guys get some run there, Sharif and Aaron Gates. What, what has been your evaluation throughout the course of the spring and then again today? Yeah, we got two phenomenal players. I mean, both those guys. And look, I think they both have position flex, too. I mean, both those guys are really good young players. Um, I'm not so sure both of them can play corner, safety. Um, and that's a challenging spot because you're in the run fits. you got to cover the slot. You're a blitzer. Um, and some of the stuff that we do, you got to be in the half, right? So both those guys are really good young players. Um, so both those guys are going to impact our team for sure. And I think we'll be looking for ways to get those guys on the field and potentially both of them, right? So um, two good young ones that I think are going to prove to be a major factor next season. Billy, talk about um, obviously a lot of pressure on uh, on Trey heading into the season with Ricky gone. Um, yeah. He had a lot of big catches, obviously the, the long touchdown. Talk about what you thought about his day. Yeah, it's a product of a lot of hard work. You know, I, mean, I think he's done. He did today what I've been watching him do all spring. Been very productive. He's got great practice habits. Um, mature. You know, his dad was a pro player. Um, I think that contributes to his mindset a little bit. And then I think. Overall, he's a. we have a lot of players in our football team that are just like Trey. They played for the first time last year as rookies or unproven players, and then they've went into this offseason. Now they know what it's like out there, and they've trained with that intent. Right? I think you've seen him change his body. Um, the other thing that I think is beneficial is he observed Ricky Pearsall you know, all summer and all season, right? And Ricky was a professional in terms of the way he approached the game. So uh, much like DJ's getting to observe Graham, uh, I think Trey got a chance to observe Ricky last year, and that's contributing what we, to what we see there. So we're, we're going to get our money's worth out of Trey Wilson. I can promise you that. Um. I think you guys had to fight off uh, Nick Saban in Alabama for Jaden Ball right around signing day. What was your initial evaluation, and then uh, has he met that, uh, improved yeah. your evaluation right this spring? Yeah, another another rookie that put on a show out there today. You know, it was fun to watch. Um, 238 pounds, you know. Um, yeah. Listen, Jaden, first of all, uh, I went to Jaden's school in January, and initially we thought he was a linebacker. And I go to the school, that was the initial evaluation. He's playing linebacker. Um, and then we find out that he wants to play running back. Um, and we had a really good evaluation on him. We had a high grade on him. Um, he ended up going to Arkansas. Um, phenomenal kid, right? I remember the first time I went into that school, um, 
his dad actually played linebacker at Columbia High School, and I played against his dad. His dad played linebacker. I played quarterback. And, um, you know, he – phenomenal family and just a class act. You go in that school with that kid, I mean, he is what you're looking for. He not only passes the physical evaluation, but he's a leader. He can run the route tree as a receiver. He was a Wildcat quarterback, and he played linebacker and safety, too. He played the entire game. Um, was a very productive player. So I think we'll look back at that one, and that's going to be good for the Gators. I think we saw a little flash of that today. Um, <laughs> defense, well, so the defense was very active. I mean, mm -hmm. last, last year had a bunch of sacks. Ultimately, that didn't really translate. Sure. But what do you see from this unit? that makes you optimistic that it's going to translate better in season? Yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, we just got height, length, depth. Um, I think the rush has improved throughout the spring. Um, yeah, we got a lot of players that are capable there. You know I mean? I think sub rushers, I mean, we got height, length. We have numerous players that I think can be effective as rushers. Um, and the coverage is better. I mean, I think that's half the battle. When you when you start talking about affecting the quarterback, coverage is part of that, right? Disguise, pressure, um, the rush lane integrity. Um, we tipped some balls today. That's one of the ways that you can affect the quarterback. So, yeah, it'll add up. Um, yeah, I just think we got good good players there, you know, top to bottom. You seem to be in charge of the stacks. Is that a, is that a tough job? <laughs> to decide yeah. Whether to let the offense get a piece of play or just yeah. Down? Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, you're trying to do your best for both teams there without being jaded. Uh, it's one of the tougher jobs. And guys are completing, right? Yeah. No, they all like to yell sack no matter what's happening. Uh, yeah, I think we got it right for the most part today. Coach, I know it's only the end of spring, but have you thought about DJ? I'm sure you have. Have you thought about DJ's role next year, package of plays? What? what, what yeah, I've, a, I've answered that question about, oh, okay. yeah. 500 times, I think, it, since uh, we signed the guy. But no, I think the big thing here is we got to get DJ to a place where he's confident, you know, and then the, a place where we trust him and his teammates trust him. I think he's definitely um, proven to be mature enough. His work ethic is outstanding. I think he's, he's developing nicely, you know, and I think can make us different, right? I think there's some wrinkles there that can cause issues for defenses and Got to understand we're taking 15 off when we put him out here, right? So um, I'm excited about how that can make us more difficult to defend. That's what I would say. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you.